Okay, guys. Hopefully now you can hear me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can hear me. I guarantee you can hear me now because the mic is moving. Uh, it wasn't before. Uh, I apologize, guys. Something's going on with fricking the programs when uh, when I turn on my soundboard and it's not connecting right away to OBS. So when I go live, it's just not uh, picking up the audio. So I had to restart real quick. I apologize. First part of the show, we're not going to worry about. I'm going to go ahead and delete it out of the VODs. You didn't miss anything. Uh, but as we're playing, I'll go ahead and talk. Uh, what I missed or what I said when the mic wasn't going. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you caught it. Uh, I do have to go in early tomorrow, so the show's only going to be an hour. Uh, they changed it again. They said, don't worry about it. Then they worry about it. Oh, by the way, can you come in early anyway? Yeah. So it took me like an hour to get home from work today because of what happened at UNLV. Uh, so, yeah. What's up, Moose? And thanks for catching that, Nick. Uh, it's been a rough day no matter what. But... It's better. Here I am. Uh, we are on part two, MDS recorder, uh, Neil Pitney cell. Got two EVPs last night. Uh, they're coming and walk away. I don't expect anything out of section two until Deads and I come in to investigate on section three. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. So we're probably just going to kind of hop, skip, and jump through this section. I Like I said, I don't expect anything. But we'll see. The second one sounded interesting at the start. It did. But, you know, that's, what, that's the shit that happens. Ugh. <sighs> Good thing is, like I said, tomorrow's my Friday. Got a four-day weekend. I'm going to try to get up early on a Friday on Friday and do a show. Uh, I do have to take a break, go get a haircut, maybe go to a concert Friday night, have some buddies in town. Uh, Saturday night's company Christmas party, so no show. Might be one Saturday during the day. Sunday there will be one as long as football. Chiefs aren't on, you know, on TV. Then... Uh, yeah, Monday there will be a show as well. Most of the day. We're going to try to get completely caught up. <laughs> Spencey F me to walk away. Yeah, that was... And we're getting pretty much the same... Getting these same pops. Say hi to everybody, Jack. Say hi, Jack. He can stay as long as he behaves. The cat, main cat of the show. Yep, that's my bud. Yeah, he's a pain in the ass, but I love him. Problem is, I have to hide ink pens from him. He's stolen like five freaking ink pens from me. You can't have any male cats since you got females in the house. <laughs> well, that's good reasoning.
since she spayed, you don't neuter female cats. You spay female cats, you neuter male cats. Let's just... <laughs> I gotta correct that one. That's... Whatever it is, right? Your brain has gone to shit. My brain goes to shit every day. brain is 100% shit all day long even when you wake up does that mean you're shit for brains I'm sorry I had to say that you left the door you left the door wide open for that and I came through like the Kool-Aid man We're going to be jumping through this recorder, this section pretty quick, I can tell. Hey, we got crickets. Yep, we had crickets. We're getting most of the freaking uh, circus now. All those are pretty self-explanatory. Oh, hold on. Backfire on the motorcycle. <laughs> Was it Jimmy, Crick Jimmy the Cricket? Well... We've had everything else. Why not, right? Time out, guys. All right, sorry about that. Jack is always causing trouble. You're right. I 
I'm trying to let Jack be Jack, but he's laying on my lap and he just kind of dug his claws into some place that doesn't feel good. And he's trying to figure out how to get this ink pen away from me without me seeing it. <laughs> if you guys could see this, he's literally looking at me and reaching for the ink pen. Sorry, bud. He ain't going to do it. He's only fucking, he's not even a year and a half old. Wait, let's see. We got him in February. He was nine months old. So. Uh, he's, he's 18 months. He's a year and a half old. He's a year and a half. He's still a kitten. He's a good kitten though. My peen. Like I said, I, I have to hide my pins every night. Otherwise, he gets them. I don't know where he puts them. Pretty much dead quiet. Yeah. Guys, dead freaking quiet. Uh... So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to get part three loaded because we're not getting anything out of uh, two. We're just not. Uh, I'm going to choke him. Ah, I couldn't hurt him. Yeah, I could not hurt this little shit. All right, we're going to actually have something to listen to tonight. Yay. Yay, team. Uh, it went into the trash bin. <laughs> well, it went into the used bin. So we're going to have, what, hour and 40 minutes on this one. Yeah, it's, so you can see we've got quite a bit here. All right, let's get on to uh, part three. Yeah, this is. This is where we're going to get evidence. This is what I've been waiting for. It's ironic that I pulled it on the second recorder. Because I, usually the way we go, we would not have gotten to this until probably April. You know, because we'll go through each recorder night one, each recorder night two, each recorder night three. So we would have had to go through 40 recorders before we get to this. Okay, that's an odd one. I 
I had to throw Jack off my lap. He's trying to eat the mic cord now. Or the headphone cord. And I just got these things. I can't let the cat destroy this. Definitely not a possibility. I just did. Okay, I think we're coming in. Yep. So what we're going to do... We're going to go ahead and uh, put some vocal enhancer in here. And see what happens. Why is nobody talking? There it is. That had to have been one of the, some, somebody else. Wasn't us.
Somebody's walking around a lot. Could Duds have been mistaken that it was night three were in there and not night two? I don't remember. Or maybe night one on a different recorder. That's entirely possible that it was on night one, not night two. It was night two or night one we had the prison between three people. That could be the uh, the deaf team that came back up. As if not, that's a hell of a lot of residual energy. Let's get some vocal enhancer back in here. Uh, see what happens. I'm trying to remember all this is a pain in the ass because it was the first week of September and we're into the first week of December. <laughs> it's like, okay. What do we do? Where were we? Well, I usually do, which leads me to believe it's the deaf team that came back. Because I always ask questions when I'm walking through. So whoever it is is making noise. They're walking around a lot. This is Danny and Albert entering the wing. Yep, the deaf team. So which means it was we were there in night one, not night two. some doors to see what they say on the inside. What would you just open doors? Doesn't make any sense.
Yeah, I know. But their first time there, they wanted to experience what they wanted to experience. Yes. Uh, the, the original graffiti is still on the walls. Once we get to the videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, I try to video as much of it as I can. There's a lot of it that I can't. Uh, some of the drawings contain a lot of nudity. Uh, I got to put up disclaimers before I show some of it because some of it is very anti-Semitic, very racist, very, very edgy. And I got to be like, Twitch, this isn't my concern. This is not of my doing. We're investigating a prison. Uh, this is the original graffiti on the walls. This is for educational purposes only. <laughs> I don't support it. I don't believe in it. But this is what's written on prison walls. So, like I said, like you hear me saying, when we uh, investigated the first the first time at Nevada State Prison, we were out in the Native American ceremonial area, and we had the N word dropped twice on the on the voice recorder by the spirits. It was on the spirit box through the radio stations at Cycle. It came came through once. We're like, wait, what did that say? Then a few seconds later, we got it a second time, and I immediately stopped the show and said, you know, Twitch, this is not us doing it. This is spirits. You know, this is what you get when you analyze paranormal evidence. I was so scared I was going to get a ban for having that said by a spirit on my, on my stream. I'm like going, I was freaking out. So yeah, you 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 got to be careful with what you get in a prison. Showing it on here, you're kind of rolling the dice. But anybody who knows anything about the paranormal, you never know what you're gonna get. And I always said, you are in life as you are in death. So if, if you die and you became a, become a spirit that stays, you're going to have the same temperament you did when you were alive. So you're going to get that energy carrying on. And it, it's bad. I mean, whatever. They really are trying to open every door. Yeah, things get horrible fast. The freak are they doing? They're literally trying to move every door in there. And they're the locking doors that slide. So they're they're locked open. I don't know how they're moving some of them. Yeah, exactly, Nick. So maybe I was wrong. We're not going to get anything off this. This is just strange. It might be one of the, like Neil Pitney's cell, hit and miss. You're only going to get evidence if you're in there investigating. So at least we have some something to look at on the screen. Hopefully an EVP is hidden here somewhere. Whether or not, that's another story.
despite the ghost, there seems to always enjoy a Brent approved night. Any night on stream is a good night, even if we don't get evidence. That's just part of it. I mean, this is the world of the paranormal that I live in. And it's all right. I mean, I can't force it. I definitely can't fake the evidence. Yeah, that's the way that's the way it goes. You might see it two nights in a row and not see it for another year. Then the next year you see it for half the year, then then it goes away again. It's just, just, you take the good with the bad. And as I've always said, out of the corner of your eye is your, the truest sense of your vision, of your vision. It's not filtered by this. What you're seeing here is unfiltered light. So pay attention to what you see out of the corner of your eye always. You think you saw somebody standing there? You saw somebody standing there. Not just a figment of your imagination. You know, it's out of the corner of your eye and all of a sudden it's like this. something out of the corner of your eye hey there it is <laughs> yeah if something jumps out at you out of the corner of your eye you can't prevent it They're literally trying to move every cell door. Why? It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, Nick, I, I can relate to that. They're not there to investigate. They they spent the part most of part of their investigation sightseeing. Most people that come join us on the investigations. All right, this is Dan Albert. Thank God they announced themselves leaving. They did did the right thing. Uh, the previous year we had people join us, and that's all they did was walk around, make noise, and sightsee. They paid 125 each to sightsee. I don't understand that. If you're going to charge me 125 a night to investigate per person, I'm going to do every area you're going to allow me to. I can sightsee while I'm asking questions. I can do two things at once. I can walk and chew gum at the same time, damn it. So I'm going to ask questions and look around at the same time. I'm going to look around and make sure nothing's popping out at me. Learn to multitask as an investigator. Walk, talk, look around at the same time. You, you do it every day at work. You walk, talk, and look around at the same time. Why can't you do it on the investigations? I don't know. I was enjoying the surroundings. You can't talk and enjoy the surroundings. Yeah, moose, exactly. 
trying to communicate, understand why they're still there. You know, it's you might not get a chance to go into some of these areas ever again. So why not take full advantage of it while you have the chance? You know, I know a lot of these other paranormal streamers. They go into areas they're investigating. They do the walkthrough and they, they're talking and they're enjoying it while they're getting the walkthrough. Then once those lights go out, sun goes down, you're all freaking business. Whatever. To each their own. If you want to pay to dick around, that's your money, not mine. I helped, I helped raise money for the prison. You paid not to investigate. That's on you. That's all on you. The prison got the money. It just happened twice. And they're probably, uh... They're here. Everybody says it's creepy to hear a baby laughing, but it's even creepier when you're home alone and there's no baby, and all of a sudden it's like... <laughs> Imagine hearing that and you have no baby in the house. You'd, you'd be wetting yourself rather quickly. His wife and some of his chat was like, oh shit, we hear it, right? I'd love to be able to live stream from Nevada State Prison. If I could get a good enough signal inside there, I'd do a, I'd do a quick like 30 minute live, you know, live investigation for the viewers, then turn it off and go back to investigating. You'd piss yourself badly while being very scared at the same time. Yeah. Like I said, I've heard little kids talking in the prison, just walking around. No kids were ever in the prison. Kids were there when it was a Warm Springs Hotel in 1861. And prison was built in 1862 because the hotel burned down. So is that the spirit of the children that died there? Try to figure that one out. Or is it the spirit of Native American children? It's one of those things you... Once you hear the spirit of a child, you wonder what the fuck it is. Hold on. I thought they left. I thought they freaking left. Evidently not. They just went to the other side of the cell block. <laughs> yeah, Nick, you've got a haunted house. You've definitely got a haunted house. Pause this for a second. Uh, she was like seven years old. My grandma and me sitting at my aunt was sitting on the front porch. Heard a baby crying in the house. Find out a baby died a few miles away. It ended up at 
your house. Some lady came in and did some kind of stuff to send the baby on to heaven and whatnot. Ooh, they did a, oh. Oh. They did a ritual. Not good. You don't. The rule of thumb in the paranormal is once you die, you have, depending on who you talk to, three to seven days to pass on into the light. Uh, so baby died immediately or seven year old or seven year old is a baby. Oh, that's tough. That house is probably still haunted as shit. One point you saw we looked like a black cat in the corner of my eye. Turned to look it was there instantly gone. Black cats can be omens of good luck anyway, uh, depending on what culture. Okay. That was still them. They're leaving the building. Uh, black cats can be omens of good luck. So I wouldn't worry about seeing a black cat that's not really there. That could be, be a sign of good luck. Could be the sign of a departed loved one saying hi, that they're, they're around. Could be just something foretold for the future, that something good is going to happen to you. Uh, yeah. So... Just do your research on black cats and see what most cultures consider black cats good luck. 90% of cultures consider black cats good luck. And it's not a black cat. It's not a cat haunting the house. It's might be a, a past loved one that is giving you that sign. Uh, just Google spirits of cats or I'm seeing the ghost of a cat and see what comes up. You're going to, there's a lot of information to read on that. And actually I need to read a little bit more. So we might not get anything on section three either, which means tomorrow night, well, we're not going to finish this tonight, uh, but tomorrow night when we finish this section of the recorder, jump into night three. Uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get, get actually get some evidence. At least we got something off this this section. I just hope it picks up. The, you know, I've been to pet cemeteries out here in Vegas. I've seen the spirits of animals. So I'm not saying it's not possible because it entirely is. I've seen spirits of my pets in my own home. Uh... Usually, if in my experiences from talking to people, your pets are your most loved members of the family, and they usually appear when when you're not at your best. Uh, when you're having a tough time in life, maybe a little depression, maybe you lost your job, or something just bad happened to you, and all of a sudden you see the spirit of your pet, and it cheers you up because. Your pets are the ones you love unconditionally, more so than your family members. So that might be their spirit saying, everything's okay, I'm around you, you're going to be okay. So all depends on your beliefs. Do I believe that? Yeah, I do. I got wow, Moose, that's crazy. Your friend's house looked on the couch, felt a cat walking on your back. Forgot the cat name they had, but it was like, get off me. And my friends hear me saying their cat's name and said he's laying there with us. I was like, well, I have a cat on my back, which what? Ooh. <laughs> Either you had some really good acid or, yeah, you had the spirit of a cat right around you. It's a cool feeling. 
And most times people have their first paranormal experience, even something as insignificant as that. It's, it's damn well significant. And a lot of people don't pay attention to it. They just brush it off like, eh, I had a nerve twitch. Or I was, I was imagining things. Or that was a button on the couch when I turned over. Or something that they can make up as explainable. 95% of the people don't want to accept that something paranormal just happened to them. You know, it's the percentage is getting better because of the paranormal shows, but most people just brush it off as a coincidence. And I always tell people, even when I do residentials, pay attention to even the smallest things that happen in your home that are out of the ordinary. Keep a notebook. Keep a scratch piece of paper. When something happens that's really small and insignificant, date, time, write down what happened. Something happens again a few days later, even if it's a little different, write it down. Keep notes. Because if things start changing and getting, they start increasing, you're going to have a paper trail for the team you're going to call for help. Hey, I had this happen. I had this happen. I had this happen. Then the, that team is going to have an easier time trying to figure out what's going on your going on in your home than you'll ever be able to figure out. I every once in a while I keep notes. You know, if something happens in here, I write it down or I type it up. And keep a notepad by your bed. Uh, if you have these like paranormal dreams or uh, anything that will wake you up, if you're woken up out of a dead sleep, write it down. If you wake up with night terrors or uh, sleep paralysis, when you're able to move, write it down. What you saw, what you felt. Keep a log, definitely keep a log of sleep paralysis because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities when it comes to that because you know you're on to something. Yeah, Nick, exactly. You know, most of us have experienced sleep paralysis. Uh, for a while there, I experienced it I don't want to say frequently, but it happened a few times. And that's usually after I had a few serious investigations. Something followed me home. I'd wake up. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't blink. I was just laying there, barely breathing in terror. So keep a notebook. You would have a book? Yeah, I'd have it in, I'd have a set of encyclopedias. So, believe me, Moose, at least you have a log of it. And later in life, I guarantee later in life you're going to be like, I wish I would have written this stuff down so I could share it with people. Because people are going to want to know what you experienced. I can, I can sit down and, you know talk about almost uh, the majority of my paranormal experiences. I've been blessed with a very, very good memory. But also I've started a, uh, a while back I started a paranormal bio and I got about eight pages in and I stopped. I wish I didn't. And I honestly don't want to go into work early tomorrow. This is this is going to suck tomorrow. 
when I get home for a show tomorrow night, Brent's going to be tired. Back to the crickets. But yeah, I always keep a journal. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, most women carry a, keep a diary. Or they keep, most women keep a journal of some kind. Saved on your notepad on your computer. You should, Nick. Always make copies, too. Get it over to a thumb drive or get it over to a remote drive just so you don't lose it. Yeah, uh, when you pass, felt like deja vu. I've had similar experiences, Moose. I can relate. It's... I don't want to say it's creepy, but it's, you don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You can't explain it to anybody because most people are going to think you're fucking nuts. Oh, you're out of your mind. You dreamt it. You imagined it. No, I didn't imagine it. You know, and most of my friends that I've, I've known for 20, 30 plus years, is this Jordan Peterson? No. And I don't know who Jordan Peterson is. Uh, KRS, I don't know who that is. Uh, growing up with the people I did, uh, they know, I've told them, I've seen stuff since I was a kid when I looked like him. I wish I knew who Jordan Peterson was, KRS. Uh as I've gotten further and further into the paranormal over a certain amount of time, they start to realize that I wasn't full of shit. And I try to tell them, pay attention to the little insignificant things that happen. They're not insignificant. Most things happen for a reason. Uh, when you're in certain moods, and you hear certain songs come on. Uh, when you're driving down the road and you're thinking of something, then you see a sign for something, for an advertisement. Always pay attention to your surroundings. When I'm driving down the street, I've seen full body apparitions walking down the street. Uh, something that looks out of place, you kind of you kind of drive past it and you kind of take that, you know, that double take back and it's gone just like that. It's like every little piece you pay attention to. Like I've always said on here, all you are is energy. Excuse me one second, guys. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you. All we are is energy trapped in a meat skeleton. This life isn't all there is. This life continues after our physical life is over. You know, as I've always said, life after life. Our energy moves on to a different plane. Once you learn to read that energy and pay attention to that energy... You're going to have a lot more fun in the paranormal. You're going to know what to watch for, how your body reacts. And everybody in this chat room right now has experienced it. I guarantee you, when you walk, you've walked into a room or walked, in, walked somewhere, and all of a sudden you get this like cold electric charge on your arms. Your hair stands up on your arms for no reason. You know, you feel that 
almost like your like your arm goes. So when you wake up and you slough on your arm and your arm goes to sleep, you get that tingling in your arm. Or the back of your neck. Yes, exactly. What's up, Tundra? You pay attention to those signs. People just brush it off as coincidence. Uh Uh-uh. Not in my experiences. Watch everything that goes on around you. And the more you do that, the more you're going to understand what I'm talking about. The more you're going to understand the paranormal. Like I said, read the books. Scroll down on my page here on Twitch. My list of books, choose three or four of them. And after you do, you're, you're going to start putting your personal experiences to those books. You're going to be like, holy shit, Brent was right. You know, this is creeping me out. What other books can I read? You choose three more books, you're going to be like, fuck. <laughs> you know, I can tie almost every event in my life to what he's been talking about. Then you're going to want to go investigate. You're like, let's see what what Brent was talking about. And then you you start appreciating. You appreciate life a whole lot more than the paranormal. You do. You appreciate death a whole lot more too, and that's morbid to say. But being in the paranormal, and I can say this without any hesitation, I'm not afraid of death. (laughs) I am not afraid of death. Uh, the more you communicate with energy, the more you know this isn't all there is. We carry on no matter what. Nobody wants to die right now. Nobody wants to go right then and there, but if it's your time, you can go in peace knowing that, you know, you're you're carrying on, you're going to have Memories that you've made with people that they have forever, but you're 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 gonna go on and be like, you know, this life was beautiful. What's in store for the next? And I, I'm not gonna even bring religion into it. I'm bringing science into it. You know, a lot of religions. Uh, once you die, you're die. There's you either go to heaven or hell. There's no in between. You know, you're either gonna be welcomed into, you know, whatever religion you believe in. But science kind of teaches you religion's not all wrong. When they say you go to heaven, your he- heaven might be your next life. And science is just saying it in a different way. We're in hell. Life is what you make it. You can make it your own personal hell. You know, so many people, I'll use addicts as an as a example. People fall in, become addicts, and they get trapped in their own hell. And it takes certain events for them to come out of that hell and shine on the other side. I know it sounds like a line out of The Shining. Oh, we all shine. We all do. You just got to find that, that medium to where you can understand that energy I, I think I only understand about 20% of it but the more, I, more I'm around it the more I study it you know it's it's a beautiful thing it really is but again like I, I'll bring religion religion says that was a motorcycle Yeah, it's a motorcycle. Uh, The more you understand that energy, and I know a lot lot of people out there don't, are probably shaking their heads, don't understand the paranormal, and that's why a lot of you are here. Yeah, all I want to do is live long, but be ready to shine for when I'm ready to just kick the bucket. Goodbye. Yeah. You know, it's like I have friends and family that will miss me. Yeah, but once they hear me talk about the paranormal, I have a list. 
I have a list of people I'm going to fuck with when I go. It's like, I'm going to first couple of days, I'm just going to mess with my friends. Then I'm going to pass, pass on into the light. Hey, I said my goodbyes. You, you knew I was a smart ass in life. I'm going to be a smart ass in death. Send me on to the next, on to the next life. So take into your beliefs as you will with that. But if you bring religion into it, read some of the books that I've posted and then form your own conclusions. Do I tie religion into my investigations? I have. I'm not going to lie. But remember, when you investigate, not everybody shares your same beliefs. Not everybody's going to say, I'm Christian, I'm Catholic, I'm Methodist, I'm Judeo-Christian, I'm Jewish, I'm Muslim, I'm atheist, I'm whatever. Because once you start down that into residentials, you're going to have people coming at you with a religion. Then you've got to kind of explain that to them. And then like, okay, I can, I can understand. But you will get the hardcore, and I hate saying this term, the Bible thumpers coming at you. And I've talked about this many times. Uh, take it with a grain of salt and don't get into it with them unless you know you can beat your friend told you he's going to mess with you when he passes. Like I said, I've told my friends the same thing. I've got a list. I read a meme the other day that I'm going to do this one. When I go, I'm going to give one of my friends my cell phone to text everybody when I go. If, if I'm not cremated, if I'm in a casket, I'm going to have him text everybody, help me, it's dark in here. And see, just watch their reactions. I mean, could you imagine doing that to somebody? Have one of your friends sit in the back snickering, text, mass texting everybody, help me, it's dark in here. And just watch everybody burst into laughter. Because they would know that I put somebody up to it. And that's just going to be the beginning. All right, guys, I said we were going to go and uh, go an hour. Uh, I got to take my happy ass to bed. I got to be up at 4 a.m. to be to work uh, as early as I can get there. Uh, I don't know what time I'm going to get off tomorrow because we're loading in a concert for Justin Timberlake. Fun, fun. I told my friend my twin to throw my bouquet of flowers in my casket funeral and see who's next oh tundra i love that that's classic that is freaking classic uh but anyways guys uh i will be back on tomorrow night unless i'm working late uh right now it's up in the air i know i have to drop off for the concert at uh seven 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 thirty then I got to do another drop about 2, 2.30. As long as I don't have to go back a third time, I should be off work in time enough to get back and do a normal show. Uh, if I'm not, uh, look for me early Friday morning. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do a, do a long show. Uh, so we can make sure we're, we're caught up on, uh, on all the recorders. Uh, like I said, we still got one more section of the second recorder to go. We're about two recorders behind schedule right now. So this week and the end of the year, we're going to try to do our best to get caught up on it. Uh, that way we're, on back, we're back on schedule. So make sure and keep an eye out, guys. I do thank you for being here. Apologize about the short show. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again.